Hey guys, Filthy Robot here, bringing you another guides, tips, and tricks video. This time we are talking about Russia. Trying to answer the question is of how good is Russia? So let's talk about the bonuses. First of these is the Grand Embassy. Uh, receives culture or science for trade routes to civilizations that are more advanced than Russia. And you get plus one of these yields per three techs or three civics, the other civ is ahead of you. Um, this is going to be a good bonus on Deity, uh, a mediocre to bad bonus on uh, multiplayer. Um, most times you're not going to see people be neighbors around you be way ahead of you in culture or science because if they're way ahead of you in science, you're probably dead to unique units. And if they're way ahead of you in culture, probably similar tile thing. I don't think it would be quite as detrimental as if they're way ahead in science, but a similar thing. They're gonna have access to more powerful civic slots, more powerful governments, more civic slots in general, more bonuses towards uh, uh, producing units of the appropriate era. It's gonna, uh, you know, they're gonna have sooner uh, access to cores and armies. It's gonna be bad news for you if uh, one of, if your opponents, especially opponents that you can send trade routes to are super bonused. Now it does have some interesting uh, play that might be available. It could, for example, be possible if you start getting uh, with the advent of trading, I think they're called trade posts, uh, which is what happens when you complete a complete a trade route to a location, you generate a trade post in that location, which allows your trader to essentially refresh his movement points there, which basically doubles the range of your trade routes every time you finish a trade route. So maybe if there's a guy on the other side of the map who's doing real, real well, you as Russia, if you spend some time working towards that, might be able to send him some trade routes uh, and not be super scared of the fact the guy with seven or eight more science techs than you is right next to you. Now he's like two civilizations away, but you can still send him a trade route and you might get some bonuses that way. But again, versus players, this is going to be weaker. If they really think that this is a problem, if they really think that, oh my God, Russia's getting 10 science a turn from me on trade routes, all they have to do is go to war with you. And suddenly all your trade routes with them are gone. Uh, you get none of these bonuses. It's totally in, con in the control of your opponent. And I don't like bonuses that don't let me control how this bonus works, but instead are dependent on what my opponent chooses to let me do. I don't think this bonus is very good. Uh, perhaps it will see more use in deity play, but at the time I'm recording this video, the deity AI is fairly weak and I don't need bonuses that are deity AI specific. I'm much more interested in opponent, uh, bonuses that are gonna help me fight my uh, human opponents. All right, so this bonus, not so great. Not real thrilled about it. Uh, Mother Russia bonus here, extra territory upon founding cities, plus one faith and plus one production from Tundra. This one's a little bit harder to break down. Um, the extra territory upon founding cities is really solid. Uh, that's very nice. It has lots of benefits. If you and an opponent are rushing to an area, uh, you know, you're both sending settlers to that area, you have uh, just a much better land grab potential than them. It gives you positions to base your military units out of. It steals resources more efficiently. It means that you can save gold on purchasing tiles and instead apply that to somewhere else, even though you still get the tiles you need. That's quite a nice little bonus there. Um, that's very. That's the same bonus basically that Shoshone had in Civilization V, and that's always been a powerful bonus. Um, however, the second part of that is a little lackluster. Plus one faith and plus one production from Tundra. Um, tundra loses yields. This essentially makes Tundra plains tiles, I believe. And actually, let's go have a look. Can we actually see some Tundra on our settle? Yeah, we can. Let's just turn on, make sure I'm not giving any, uh, oops. Yeah, right. So this is a pretty standard Tundra tile. One, one here. And then what, uh, probably non-hill Tundra is probably even like one, zero. So this is gonna make, uh, your tundra tiles very slightly better if you settle cities. Can we settle it here? Let's settle it together and take a look. We have enough gold cards. We didn't actually get any on our borders. Yeah, exactly. There's a 1-0 tile right there. So this essentially, as Russia, makes tundra into planes. Is how the way we look at that. And planes is planes are okay. And it's going to help for things like any sort of uh, bonus resource on on a on a tundra tile is going to become halfway reasonable. It's going to make it basically a plains tile instead of that. It does give Russia a little bit more reach where it can plant cities. I don't think this is ever going to be particularly amazing. The plus one faith is okay, but faith in of itself doesn't get you a religion faster because uh, religion is based on profit points. It does have some late game use. If you can work a bunch of Tundra tiles to get a lot of faith per turn, you can do some unit purchasing strategies or great people purchasing strategies with faith in a similar vein that Japan can do that. Um, that's not bad. And that synergizes nicely with its unique district, which we'll talk about in a little bit. 
I don't hate this bonus. I just find it not that great either. Um, perhaps the best part of it, I think I've just mentioned this already, but the best part of this is essentially you can utilize more land as Russia than you can as anybody else because other people are going to go settle Tundra and go, holy crap, Tundra's bad. And Russia's going to settle Tundra and go, holy crap, Tundra's bad. But I guess I can deal with these cities. They still have some production and they'll give me a, uh, another yield that I wouldn't get otherwise. So I think it could actually be okay. I don't love it, but I don't hate it either. All right, let's talk about their unique unit. Then we'll get to their unique district and we'll go from there. So the Cossack is their unique unit. Let's see if I can, well, I know where it is in the tech tree, but let's see if we can actually find it uh, here. There we go. Cossack's kind of interesting. Um, it's quite, the, the bonuses are quite strong. So it's a Russian unique industrial area unit that replaces the cavalry, stronger than cavalry, and adds plus five combat strength when fighting in or adjacent to its home territory. Don't really care about that. Uh, on a defensive war, that of course is gonna be a permanent plus five combat strength, which is okay. What is this? So melee strength 67. So like one, what is that? One twelfth about in terms of a, a boost. So about 8%, is that right? I think that's right. Uh, about 8%, I think, uh, of a combat strength increase. All right, that's something. Not great, but not terrible. Um, and totally useless on the attack because it has to be adjacent to your home territory. So maybe a couple attacks, but that's not terrible. Like we don't mind defensive bonuses. Uh, those, are, those are good. But the part that I really like about it actually is can move after attacking if movement points remain. Uh, this is something that was dropped. All horse units in Civilization V can do this. If they have uh, attacks, they can move back. And what this allows you to do is get around the one unit per tile thing. It allows you to focus fire in the same way that ranged units focus fire. So if we're attacking a unit here, there's only, and let's say, we're, let's say we're attacking from the east, so we only control these three tiles. There are three tiles that can attack that unit. And maybe we can get three units back here with ranged units, maybe five units if we're really lucky. So maybe there's a total of eight unit, eight tiles that can attack this tile, right? Well, if you can cycle units, if you can attack, then move the unit back, then move another unit in and attack and move the unit back, and then you move another unit in and move the unit back, you can really, really focus fire. And you can do that in a way that essentially gets around the one, one unit per tile restriction and gets around the fact that most of the time you're not going to have all eight tiles that can attack this square under your control. You might only have one or two, or there might be some mountains in here, like if you're attacking around here, uh, maybe a mountain and the opponent has some units there and this unit's rough terrain so you can't get there and blah, 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 blah. Basically, what it boils down to is this is an extra way of focus firing. Uh, and this is always how horse units were used in Civilization V. They were more effective on defense because you could use your roads, and roads uh, essentially allowed you to cycle more horses onto the same tile to attack that same tile. So I quite like the Caustic's abilities. They're going to be amazing on defense and not too bad on offense either. You could attack a unit and then move out of the harm's way a little bit, although that's less likely to be quite as useful. All right, uh, moving on, let's talk about their unique district, which I want to call Larva, <laughs> because I read this and I see Larva, but no, this is probably not said as, this is Lavra in some way, it's V-R-A as opposed to R-V-A. Um, and as like, as most unique uh, special districts are, it has a uh, half off bonus, so it is cheaper. Um, it replaces the Holy Site district. Your city border grows by one tile every time a great person is expended in this city. That's interesting, I didn't even know about that until I read this right here, okay. So more tile gaining there. Um, it gives you great profit points. It also gives writer, artist, and musician points, which is something the theater districts do in other civs. Uh, so that's interesting. That may allow you to get very early game uh, tourism pressure going, which is something that we haven't seen a lot of. I haven't seen a lot of the multiplayer, but this is interesting enough to me that I'm now a little bit curious. Um, if that could actually be a thing by generating these people so early. Generally, the way that tourism has worked in Civ V, and I believe in a similar way that it works in Civilization VI, is the sooner you get tourism pressure on people, the better, because it's an accumulation of tourism across the, the eras that eventually is going to amount to a lot of tourism. You're eventually trying to overtake their cultural defense with the tourism offense. Now, the exact numbers are going to vary. We'll see how that system works in Civilization VI compared to Civilization V. I don't know the exact details yet, but my my playing around with the pre-release content has to suggested that it is a matter of overcoming your opponent's tourism, your opponent's culture to some degree. And that means the earlier you can get tourism, the better. And that's all the great people do right now is essentially generate tourism, the great uh, musician, artist, and writer people. So getting these points at the building of a holy site, which you're going to build often very early, uh, is going to be quite good and means you don't have to build the kind of terrible theater square district right now. Um, adjacency bonuses, the mountain bonuses are standard. One faith from every two adjacent woods is standard. One faith from every two adjacent district tiles is standard, as in all uh, holy sites get that. Two faith from each adjacent natural wonder, I believe that is standard as well. 
Um, so looking at it this in that way, I think then this is a fairly standard holy site, except it costs less production uh, and it gives you um, great writers, artists, and musicians sooner. Let's just double check that the holy site gives you two, two profit points. Okay, no. So um, the lever over there gives two great profit points per turn as opposed to one, which means you're also going to get a sooner shot at a, pro at a profit, which means a sooner shot at a religion than other civilizations. Okay, so let's try to put that together and see if we can conclude kind of as a whole what this is going to synergize, what synergizes well with this, and the things you're going to be able to do as Russia that you're going to be able to do better as Russia than other civilizations. So you can settle more land because you can settle tundra. That's going to be dependent on your starts. Some starts you're still never going to find tundra, and sometimes you're going to start in tundra when you don't really want to start in tundra. But yes, you can utilize that territory, but the territory is still probably not all that great. It's basically plains territory. That's okay, though. Um, the plus faith one per, and plus production, the production part makes it equal to uh, planes, and the faith part actually lets you get some decent faith rolling that you might not be able to otherwise uh, as other civilizations. And that faith that you're using can be used for one of a couple strategies. It can be used for unit purchasing with theocracy, and it can be used for great pur uh, people purchasing just throughout the game. Now, that can help a lot with things like scientists, engineers. Um, uh, uh, what's the one I'm looking for? Uh, generals and uh, merchants that can help a just normal game but it can also help with a very specific tourism oriented game as well uh, since you're already getting those great uh, musician artists and writer points you could potentially be faith purchasing some of those as well and try for some tourism pushes it's going to be something that i think russia is going to be interesting to try attempting to do that with because again early tourism is going to be better than late tourism because it's just going to have that accumulated effect across the eras of helping you uh and i and as i've spoken about with japan a similar bonus here with the, having the cheaper uh holy site district uh you can afford to put more of these downs and put more of these down in your empire than you would otherwise because a lot of times you just cannot afford to be building a bunch of holy site districts in your expands there's too many other things you have to get up and running uh, including military to keep yourself alive and production and uh, and then industrial and commerce hubs to keep those cities uh, really able to keep up with the other stuff the other demands they have to build so i'm interested to see how this plays out my my initial take on it is again kind of a medium sieve uh there is a downside when your strategy is not flexible. If you're always looking to see some sort of tourism victory out of Russia, that may not be all that good because players will then be able to very easily predict, oh, it's Russia, he's going tourism. We need to stop that by doing a X, Y, Z at some certain point in the game. We can ignore it before that. I don't like that element of it and I don't think this initial bonus is very good, but I do like the flexibility of being able to expand to land that other players don't want. It's also likely that your Tundra expands are not going to be very appealing to other players because whereas they're good for you, they're quite crap for everybody else. So you might actually find that your borders, that your cities are a little bit safer than they might be otherwise just because players don't really want to conquer them. Now, that said, it's insta raise right now, so there's no downside to burning a city pretty much instantly when you take it, so that may not be quite as safe, but they may... It may be less of a I want to steal Russia's land uh, kind of motivation and more of a Russia needs to be stopped motivation, which is a different set of things. So like it's not like they it's not like when you when you race for a natural wonder and you both wanted the land because the yields are so good. It's not going to ever be good yield for a non Russian civilization. Um, so what do I think of them again? Uh, we will do at some point an actual ranking list where I give you guys what I think the tier one sieves are, the tier two sieves and that kind of thing. But that's not the point of these videos. These videos are really to talk about the synergies and talk about the implications of the abilities in these civilizations. I think this puts Russia, again, at a fairly mediocre position, maybe medium to weak, uh, like closer, like whereas Japan and Germany feel medium strong to me, uh, the Russia sieve feels either kind of dead medium or maybe medium weak. I don't know that this is going to be enough territory consistently to be all that great. Uh, this bonus is quite crap. Uh, the Cossack is going to be useful, but it is later in the eras. Again, uh, the sooner you get a, a bonus uh, building or a bonus uh, unit, the more powerful it's going to be because of the more time it has to impact your game. And uh, cavalry are pretty late. They are right here. It's an industrial era unit, so it's going to be a while before you can get your Cossack. So that's pretty late in the game. And then uh, this final bonus here, the unique uh, Holy Site District. Religion's not that strong right now. Religious beliefs aren't all that good. 
And there are ways to spend faith that can make them strong, great people, or purchasing military units with the particular government choice. But these are very specific kind of predictable strategies. So I don't know. I think kind of mid to week would be my take home from uh, from uh, Russia, rather. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Uh, I like talking about this stuff with you guys, and I'm looking forward to doing all the civs. If you enjoyed my content, please hit the follow button. Come find me on Twitch. Come find me on YouTube. And come check out the rest of my content. Uh, Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Filthy Robot out. See you soon, and hopefully you're enjoying the series.